Hello, we have Dimitri Fontaine of uh, Elget fame talking about his magical creation. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, so we're using Emacs. Yeah, that's an easy start. So, okay. <laughs> that was the obvious one. So, um, Sam just said that uh, if you want to use Emacs Live, he's been uh, building a lot of things to uh, bring in dependencies and uh, uh, nice way to do an easy setup of Emacs and he's saying that if you want to do the same thing just do it. So that could be a good introduction for ELGET, that's what I did too. So that, that's the usual presentation so if you don't know who I am I'm working mainly on PostgreSQL and uh, when I can I get to do some uh, Emacs Lisp because it's uh, really when you begin doing that there is no end to it. So what does it mean uh, having the, all the power of Emacs Lisp that uh, we've been talking about uh, all day long? Uh, it means that you have loads of extensions uh, to Emacs that you maybe want to be using. So for example, uh, there is an extension called go to last change. Some, some of you might be using it already. Not many of you, okay. So it's really awesome. It, it, it gets you the, it gets the, the, the pointer back to the last change you made in a file. And uh, that means you don't have to think about it, you just get back to where you were before you had to look up that French function you did forget about. So let's say you want to install that in your Emacs. Nowadays you have ELPA but it's not doing all the work and uh, we will expand on that later. Uh, the old way to do things uh, was to try and discover the feature. So join us on IRC because some really nice people are uh, helping uh, everyone. You find it, you get the file and well it's I, I won't spell out loud all the points all the bullets in there but it's a lengthy process and I guess most of you already either did that process manually at least once or you are lucky enough to only know Emacs 24 and you have ELPA integrated and you didn't care but that's for the lucky ones. Or you looked at, you took some friend doing that, telling you it's really easy to do, and you didn't believe him and you didn't do it. So you have just the bare Emacs and new extension. So, okay, let's try something uh, better. That's the second part of the, the installation manually, because it was not over. Because once, in, once you have the, the extension installed, you want to try it, so you need to figure out how, how, if, is there uh, some specific setup to do about it? And uh, does it work the way you want it to work? But if you're not happy, you have to remove it manually yourself. And uh, if you're happy with it and then there is an upgrade, you have to get back to the whole process all over again. Okay, so now that you did that, if a friend of you wants to do the same thing, well, there is a better choice. You are going to make him afraid. So either he will say, oh, Emacs is so cool, it's so powerful. Let's spend an hour together to get that bits of extension installed. Or he will say, no, no, you're crazy. I'm back to VI or something. So the result is that you, you don't have uh, that much power in your hands because you will only install, if it's that complex to install something, you will only install things that are known and trusted. So if you don't have a friend telling you, okay, I did install that in Emacs, here is the way it works and for me it works really well, you should try it. Uh, will you try it? You sh usually no. You, you will just uh, not even search about uh, random new stuff. So the the craziest of us will do random page on Emacs Wiki and install the thing just to see about what it does. But <laughs> not everyone will do. So how to fix the situation? Where? Well, that's Yelget. <laughs> I had to find a logo. So one day, uh, after two years in the making, uh, I, find, uh, uh, I did have to find a logo. I did find this one. So. I don't even remember the name of it. Pangolin, it's right. It's a pangolin, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Who's asking? 
a pangolin is the nice ELGET logo that you can see on the, <laughs> on the drawing. So, if you get if you install ELGET, no, the workflow is a little different. You get a you have a function uh, ELGET list packages that looks a lot like uh, the ELPA uh, standard uh, list package stuff. So you can pick things and you do incremental search, you know, that's the way in Emacs that all things work. So occur, occur or incremental search and you find whatever you want to, to, to test and you ELGET get install it and uh, you play with it. If you're happy with it, you keep it. If you're not, you MetaX uh, ELGET get remove it. And uh, when you fancy some upgrades, you can try out uh, MetaX ELGET self update and uh, MetaX uh, ELGET update to update just the uh, one extension at a time. So, uh, how many of you have already been using uh, the uh, APT GET uh, system in Debian? Okay, so it's the same user experience, that's the same goal. The, it, it's working in a different way, but if you've been following along, Emacs is like your new operating system. So, of course, you need APT GET in Emacs. <laughs> so, it's called the LGET. Uh, that's not the only thing you can do. ELGET will manage package dependencies because if you don't have dependencies, you don't have a packaging system. In the Emacs list plan, uh, up until uh, very recently, uh, each and every extension author was working on his own. So most of the extensions you will find uh, have an empty dependency list. But it, it, it's becoming to be different nowadays. So we have more and more extensions to deal, uh, to deal with uh, dependencies. We're getting there slowly. Uh, we have a cleanup command. We have uh, info documentation that you can read, actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, we did write it, so maybe you can read it. And um, by default, you will get a stable branch of Yelget, which means that it's very stable, and we will get back to that. It means that very few things will change over time because well, we we are hiring a um, stable branch maintainer, okay? <laughs> so that's how stable it is. We promise no, no new bugs, right? <laughs> we don't promise to, to fix the, the ones that are already there. Okay, it's easy to install and we will see that in a minute. And um, we have lots of flexibility around the setup. And... Uh, if you remember about what Sam showed and uh, how to set up each and every extension in the Emacs Live packs, we have the same facility about in, Ema in uh, ELGET. So you can do the same thing. And we have autoload support, which means that you can have a really quick Emacs startup time, the one time of each month when you start it. Yes, it's about once a month, right? Once a week, maybe, but. We also have an answer to the Emacs wiki. I don't trust the, uh, the file problem because there is no authentication over there, which is that you can ask ELGET to compute uh, the checksum of the file you've just downloaded, and then you add the checksum in your uh, setup, which means the next time you download the file because you lost, him, uh, you, you lost the file on your machine or you are installing ELGET on a new machine or sharing with a friend, if the checksum does not match, the non-trusted extension will not get installed by ELGET. You will get an error instead. So if there was just an update, you have to check the update manually. And if you're happy with the update, then you can install the new checksum. So with that, you can trust Emacs Wiki. So most users, they won't use that feature, but they are so happy to have it. Someday they will use it, maybe. <laughs> so we also have this, the same checks, checksum support uh, for Git, but it, it just means, in fact, for Git that you can target uh, any tag or branch or commit that you want to uh, remain at. If you don't want to be exposed to reviewing your setup because the done extension did have some update that breaks it, you can ask Yelget to please stay at the, the version that works. And uh, we even support Windows user. You're not out in the blue. <laughs> we had um, we had some uh, tickets to support it, so I was very surprised. 
But uh, yes, uh, we have Windows users that are using Emacs, happy about it, and they want all the features of Emacs in Windows. All of them, even if that means running make, autoconf, uh, etc. commands, uh, they are uh, okay to do all the work, the extra work required for a Windows user to have those commands and be able to run them. So they want Yelget to be able to run them. So that's what we did. And uh, extra, extra. So we did say that installing an extension, if you do it manually, there is a lot of little things to do by hand. So Yelget will do them for you. So this list here is exactly the steps uh, that Yelget will follow when installing for you the extension. So it knows how to fetch the extension, and we will see that uh, it knows a lot of ways, different ways, to get at the extension code. And it knows how to do that, even if it's more than a single EL file. Because the, the first versions of uh, ELPA, the, uh, in the package system that uh, is uh, given with Emacs, uh, it was not really not easy to package a multi-file uh, extension. I, I don't know if it's still the case today, but apparently there is a panel later on today to sort that out. Um, and uh, in the ELGET land, uh, the, the package description is called the recipe. So in the recipe, you get to uh, describe how to get the package and what's the default configuration, how to do the setup, extra, extra. And uh, so when you install as a user a package, an extension, what happens is that you'll get f reads the recipe and uh, what it does is driven by the recipe. We will see some examples. It will, uh, the, the, the main uh, thing that uh, people are uh, not liking about the, um, the Emacs package system, the ELPA stuff, is that it won't run uh, system commands for you, which means that it won't integrate uh, documentation provided in the info format. So if you're using the info documentation book uh, with uh, control H, I, or MetaX info, Using ELPA, the thing won't add the new chapters, the new books into that. ELGET will. Not quite true. Oh, good news. Oh, so you're soon to deprecate ELGET. Nick is the new ELGET maintainer. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a good that uh, we don't need to write ELGET, but I, uh, we will need to talk about that if we are already there or not. Um, so it will by compile, by, by compile the packages, autoload what's to be autoloaded, and if the author didn't think about autoloads, as a recipe author, you can add some loads to the package so everybody can benefit, and the author, you don't have to talk to him, because we will see in some cases, you find really interesting extension that didn't receive any update in the last decade. So. You can try sending an email to the author, but if it's, well, if it's a decade old, maybe it's not interesting anymore. And maybe it's dead. So just edit the recipe and be happy again. So of course, ELGET is doing it all for you, but you're going to tell me, well, it's Emacs. There is no value at all in the tool if it's not doing the things my way. You know, not any other way, please. So ELGET has been made with that in mind, and it will uh, bend itself to follow up on whatever you want it to do, or almost. If, if you can express it in, in Emacs Lisp, it will happily do so. And uh, so, for example, we get back to the, uh, to the Emacs Live Packs example with the uh, ELGET user package directory, which is a path where you store files named init dash the name of the package dot el and elget will automatically load them and if you ask elget to be lazy it will eval after load the the file rather than just evaluating it at the startup because some people are really interested into the start type of emacs i really don't quite understand that so i will insist more but <laughs> it's important for some users so elget knows how to adapt to that situation too and if you change your mind on the on the init and you add some new things 
in the um, in the way you want to set up a package, you can use the metax uh, init function that will uh, replay the init steps for you so to restart Emacs. That's where I get annoyed. That's when I have to restart Emacs and uh, uh, like uh, 250 buffers in there and uh, 11 processes and uh, whatnot. So I can understand people not wanting to risk to for the startup time to be too long, but don't tell me I have to restart it. Okay, recipes. So the whole world around the Elgate is around recipes, really. So recipes, it's a little uh, declarative file where you explain Elgate, you explain the system, what you want it to do. So those are the, the, the package drawers tool. Uh, those are separated from the sources so that you don't have to contact the authors to do the packaging. Anybody can do the packaging. Sometimes it's better to contact the author, so don't, don't use that as an excuse to add some more monkey patching and not contacting upstream. That would not be very good. But if you just need to add some autoloads, it's quicker to do, that, to do it in the recipe and then show the author how it works. Um, so let's dive into the ELGET recipe because, of course, ELGET is self-supported, uh, self-hosted. And we have a scratch installer that we will see just after. So that's the whole recipe on how to install ELGET. So when you use the scratch installer to install ELGET itself, it will use that file to know what to do. Of course, uh, there is a little uh, bootstrapping code that will know how to read that file and drive the loading, but that's the idea. And it's a really good idea, and uh, the way I know it is because it's not mine. Okay, so that's really, really a good idea. I, I st stole it to Tom Tromey, who did the first ELPA system. And uh, the important bits are, the, you know, the, do you see the type GitHub? So it means go to the thing on GitHub. You have a branch property, which means that uh, you want the stable branch by default. Uh, the PKG name uh, depends on the type, so here you can reconstruct the GitHub URL using the PKG name. There is an info uh, file located at the source uh, directory of the package, and for it to work you have to load uh, explicitly elget.el. And that's it. So here is another example, and that used to be my uh, I go on my flagship example on why ELPA is not something I will use ever. And as of last week, <laughs> this package landed into ELPA. <laughs> so this package has been written by, uh, by um, a well-known Emacs contributor, but who's been inactive for some years now. And um, it's really easy to write the recipe without contacting him. And uh, what you see on screen is all you have to write as a recipe author if you want to package and have an easy way to install that extension in your system. Once you've written that file at the right location, you can already do metax will get install and it will do all, all what it needs to do. And uh, as you have an autoload, when you want to use a feature, it will actually work the first time. So. In simple cases, it's quite easy to uh, to write the recipe. And what you see is that the, this recipe is of the type HTTP, which means it can be you, you you can package any random file you can find on the internet. Crazy, right? You don't want to do that, but that's why we have also the checksum. And uh, the 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 third and uh, last example for today of uh, a theme is. Uh, the re this recipe is a little more complex, but not that much. So the only things that you didn't see yet is the uh, depends property, uh, which means that, of course, if you want to have that them, first install the color term facility and then install that. So if you metax install this thing, it will first install the color term for you. And uh, the prepare things. I won't go into details into the um, 
exact in its sequence, but the prepare thing is for recipe authors and you have a pre-init stuff for um, users. So go have a look at the documentation, it's well explained. If it's not, it's a bug, so open an issue. And with that, what we have here really is um, social packaging. Because if you want to share the packaging of an Emacs feature you just discovered, the only thing you have to do after writing the recipe and uh, actually uh, checking that it works is sending the file by email to a friend or whatever other mean you want to use. If you share the file, anybody can use the recipe and have exactly the same setup as you just did have locally. So it's really easy even to have a, a, a private uh, set of recipes that uh, uh, you share only with your friends for whatever reason you don't want to share them. If you want to share them, we really like you to do that. So send an email to me and I will integrate it into ELGET or you can open a, 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 an issue on GitHub. Best is, op is to open an issue with a pull request within uh, we'll find a full recipe that actually works. That's the best way to do it. But uh, apparently it's not really obvious <laughs> to anyone, so <laughs> I spell it out. Okay. And as soon as I will get uh, the, the thing and push it to the repository, you can uh, you'll get self-update and you get it locally on your machine. The one I did actually uh, push or I say I, but uh, it used to be only me, but we are nowadays uh, uh, five of us to do that kind of work. And we are very happy to, uh, to, to welcome new recipes. So if you find a feature that we don't have yet in ELGET, just send the recipe. So I did tell you that uh, we have different ways to get at the source code of the extensions. So here is the list. I will begin with the end, ELPA. So if you think ELPA is much better than ELGET, but there is this package that you can't have in ELPA yet, you can use both. They will be really happy to work together. There is no problem. And maybe in some years we will deprecate ELGET because we don't need it anymore. Meanwhile, you will be able also to use packages that are only hosted on a Git repository, GitHub, HTTP, well, you can read, so I won't read it for you uh, out loud, but all of those methods are working with ELGET. It will know how to fetch the code and install and configure and set up the package. So that's really meant uh, to fetch extensions of Emacs that the author does not want to package or that uh, the license means it won't be integrated easily into the official uh, repository for ELPA. Uh, for example, I had a bug declared on uh, an issue opened on uh, ELGET because uh, the, the terms of the license I'm using uh, are rude. So some people won't be able apparently to use ELGET because the license is rude. The, the license is the uh, WTF public license. Uh, so apparently it's too rude to, to people. So that could be a reason why this stuff won't ever be integrated into another software or into another repository. And maybe some other extensions are following the same uh, ends. So ELGET is there to, uh, to don't care and just let you install it. Uh, the, the, the thing that is really important on this slide is in the middle. You, can you see Emacs Wiki written on the middle? And there is the MetaX ELGET Emacs Wiki refresh line. So if you find anything on Emacs Wiki that is not yet on uh, ELGET, just run that command. Uh, the Emacs Wiki uh, maintainer, Kansenata, uh, did, offer, did me the favor of adding a CGI script so that it's easy to parse the list of packages and their description. And uh, most of the Emacs Wiki stuff is uh, really easy to integrate into ELGET. You always end up writing the exact same four lines recipe where only the name of the page is changing. So ELGET will do that for you. And when you do that, all of a sudden you have like 2,000 new recipes to install. And that's it. 
So I, I continuously receive uh, new uh, pull requests to add a new Emacs Wiki script uh, explicitly as a recipe into ELGET. Uh, if you're into that, uh, uh, if you if you find yourself doing that, just try ELGET Emacs Wiki refresh. Maybe ELGET will write it for you actually. So the main drawback of ELGET when compared to uh, package.el uh, that is also called ELPA is that it does not come installed with Emacs. When you get Emacs, it's not there yet. So here is how you install it. You copy paste that thing and you type in, well, control D for example, when you are just after the final closing parentheses you wait for some seconds, depending on uh, your uh, internet connection speed, and it's installed. And after you've, done, you've been doing that, without restarting Emacs, you can start using it. And uh, if you want to use it the next time you run Emacs, you have to, uh, to tell it so due to Emacs. So the, we just said that when you have yelget and you want to install a new extension you don't have any work manually to do but if you want to bootstrap the system so if you want to use yelget to manage the other extensions you have to do that that's the last time you did something manually to install an extension okay so you had that in your setup but maybe you don't want to install it exactly this way what it will do if you can read it is that if it's not already installed it will uh, fetch it dynamically and install it and when it's done it will be working as usual okay so if you don't want to automatically install ELGET at Emacs startup maybe you want to to do another setup but the default one is this one and it works really well we even have an active community we are uh, a, we have received uh, patches, pull requests from uh, 181 people. I almost can't believe that myself, but well, it's so it is. So uh, about uh, uh, maybe between 10 and 15 people uh, out of those are actually, actually have been contributing code and features to ELGET. Most of them have only contributed uh, recipes, but uh, as we, uh, we are using Git, and pull requests, so we track them nonetheless. So if you send me a recipe for Yelget, you will, we will have your name in the list of contributors. <laughs> you will be famous. <laughs> Consider that. And uh, so Yelget gets uh, gets to you with uh, a lot of recipe already included, and remember that those uh, seven hundred and something recipes are only those that needed some uh, uh, special tweaking because just you just saying oh it's on Emacs wiki was not enough you needed to do some bits and tweaks for it to be perfectly integrated just after uh, you typed elget install so some people have taken the time to cook up that many recipes so that they just work when you install them and uh, if your recipe is on Emacs Wiki and really simple and it's not in the main list, maybe you just forgot to say you'll get refresh Emacs Wiki. Okay, so it will do that at install time, but you have to run it uh, over and over again so sometimes because there are lots of activity on Emacs Wiki. We have zero support for Emacs mirrors and uh, ELPA too, so that's why they now have eScreen and uh, it used to be my differentiator like look at this screen they won't ever have it and it's an emacs mirror so we know both have it okay <laughs> yeah emacs mirror is crazy like 300 packages okay yes yes and so you have access to all of those packages by default uh, when you use yelget And uh, yes, it's uh, it's getting old, so it's old news. Sorry about that, but it means it's really stable, and you can use it actually today. If you're uh, uh, typing in Emacs now and you're connected to the internet, 
just try the slide I showed you before. Yep. And uh, in a minute, you have it installed in your system and you can play with it. Any question? Yeah, plenty. Yeah, the, the, the mic is coming. Okay, I had um, a couple of questions actually. One was around versioning. Um, how do you uh, how do you describe versioning? Uh, like how do you attach a version to something which wouldn't normally have it, like something from Emacs Wiki? And then how do you uh, can you specify in your dependency list that you know that this package depends on something and it needs to be at least version 2.4, but not later than. So the, the answer is really easy. We don't, <laughs> except for. Uh, Packages that got uh, merged into Emacs itself, where you can say that uh, uh, from Emacs, uh, for example, 24.3 is built in. So there is a built in property that you can use to say that uh, on such and such Emacs version, you don't need anymore to fetch anything. It just is in there. Uh, for other packages, if it's Git, uh, if the source repository is Git, uh, you can uh, use the checksum or the branch properties. If it's on uh, Emacs Wiki, you can use the checksum property, but it will only prevent you to installing another version. It will not target this one explicitly because it does not know how to get in the, um, uh, in the revision history of the file to get the version you wanted. Uh, the, uh, the fact that we support so many methods to get at the files means that it's not easy to support a version because most of them don't have a version uh, concept. Uh, if you're using GitHub and the guy has been doing a tag on the Git uh, repository, uh, then you can have a, a zip ball or a tar ball uh, with uh, any tag. And uh, there is support for that in ELGAT too. So it's quite complex, but basically uh, no, but you can trick it to have it. I, th I think it would be a great thing as like as a community if we were able to standardize on some best practice around versioning because that's really the only way that we can kind of get yeah. to a stable I state. Tend, of, yes, I tend to agree. The, the problem is that uh, so ELPA is made to, uh, in my mind, the philosophy behind the ELPA is to have something that uh, uh, that is working the right way, and the philosophy behind the LGET is that it just works. So if you look at the extensions available on the internet, there is no right way. So you get tries to still work. That's the goal. Thanks. I, I had one more question. Yeah. I won't hog the microphone too much longer. Um, so, so say I, I install the get on my laptop and I download a bunch of packages which I consider essential to my own personal tastes and preferences. How do I then, um, like how are they how is that list of packages persisted and can I can I then propagate that to my other computers automatically? Yes, actually, yes. It's one of the goals of Yelget. So let me find you the, if I can find it again, oh, it was much after. Okay, so that's the basic setup. And what you can see at the end is that we call the magic function ELGET and we ask this function to sync. It will uh, sync any known package. So the basic version is that the known package are the package that you did ELGET install before. The advanced version is that you can add any number of arguments to that function. And those arguments are the names of the packages that you want to install uh, to set up at Emacs startup. So when uh, uh, when you share your Emacs configuration in between different uh, stations, it will uh, have the same ELGET line at the bottom, and so it will instantiate the same list of packages explicitly. And if you never ever did ELGET install on the new station, when it reads the list of packages, it will install them and then set them up. And so there you go. It's covered in the documentation too, so if you have a uh, further question, Get to me today, but if it's tomorrow, I'll read the documentation. Other questions? Uh, just from the point of view of exposing more people to ELGET, is, is there an ELPA package? 
Uh, I wanted to do that, but it's a multi-file system, and I don't know how to package a multi-file system for real PA. So I need to talk to Nick. <laughs> I will talk to Nick for him to package it. And, and there was just one one small thing, uh, slightly confusing about the uh, recommended yes. methodology. Seriously, uh, test before you send the recipe to someone else. Whatever you want to, <laughs> he'll get don't, doesn't mind. <laughs> it's just for you to keep friends, you know. <laughs> Other questions? Uh, no yes. Yeah. Okay. I was curious about integration with uh, Elpa or EPA. Ah. Uh, what happens if uh, you install uh, a recipe which is already built in, you didn't know. Um, uh, what it, about shadowing of packages? Uh, and also I noticed that uh, the package directory shows up under the Elgate directory. So is this also some part of the integration between Elgate and uh, the LPA? Yeah, to be completely honest, I don't use the LPA at all. So uh, that, that, that sounds like an advanced uh, setup for me. And so I don't have really the answer. So we can work on that later if you want. And uh, maybe we can find some ELGET users who are also using the LPA. But I don't know the answer myself. Other questions up there? Um, does ELGET have the notion of a kind of an automatic dependency? So if you're using apt-get um, in Debian, and suppose I install something and it needs the following three libraries, then they'll be installed. But when I install the program I wanted to install, then it's uninstalled the libraries too. Do we do this too? Or? Yes, thanks to Daniel over there. So it's called, did we see it somewhere? So I can't, yes, it's uh, auto-remove. We have a, so it's called auto-remove in, in apt-get, and it's called cleanup in uh, elget. So you have a function that you can call where, whenever you want that will do the cleanup. And the cleanup is the difference in between the set of packages you said you want to keep and the set of packages that are installed but not explicitly required by the first set. Yes. Say I have a local set of patches against a well-known version of a package. Can ELGET help me maintain those patches while staying update with the base package? Uh, yes and no. I have an answer, but it does not involve ELGET at all. It just uh, maintain your own Git clone and uh, use your Git clone in the recipe definition. You, you can actually have uh, several uh, recipe directories. So there is the one provided by ELGET, and you can have a user recipe directory overriding the, uh, the ELGET ones. So for the same packages, you can have as many, repos as many recipes as you want to, and uh, there is um, a priority. That means that ELGET will use the, the, most, the first in the priority list. So if that's yours with your own fork, it will, uh, you don't have to, uh, to maintain a, um, a fork of ELGET itself to, to do that. Just do a new recipe in, the, in a, uh, a directory you did set up for ELGET, and you can maintain your own forks in there. How you maintain those forks and those pages is your problem, not ELGET. Sorry about that. Great, thanks. Any other question? Yes. Hi, Dimitri. Hi. Um, can you parameterize an you'll get a recipe to know what to do on different distros? Yes, we have uh, distros. distros. Uh, maybe it's harder for distros, but if I can find uh, uh, this slide, we have uh, here, we have per system type build commands. And system type is a variable that uh, is set up by Emacs itself. So if you look at the list of system types, there is Windows, Mac OS X, yes. uh, you have Debian for FreeBSD, the usual Debian, etc., etc. So you can parameterize, you can uh, set up the build of the recipe depending on that. 
Any other question? Yes? There is one question over there. Can we have a quick uh, example of uh, one installation of an, a, a recipe that uses a system common like something like Mu4E or something like that where yes. we, we have dependencies that are outside of X itself? So there is a, a function called ELGET find recipe file that apparently I did use recently when preparing the slides. And uh, if I remember correctly, Wanderlust is using uh, a build command here, and uh, you wanted to see some uh, some shell commands, maybe. Yes. Okay. So. So, for example, this one is uh, using a build command here. Can you see it? Yes. So in the. Well, it's written uh, really small. So uh, there you go. And uh, for the previous answer, you can see that the build command is not exactly the same uh, on Darwin, which is Mac OS X, than on other uh, systems. So the, the build property is the usual build command, and the other one is the Darwin specific command. And the uh, difference being that uh, you have to be uh, really careful uh, about the path where to find e Emacs on their own. And so ELGET provides a ELGET Emacs uh, variable where it stores the, the full path to the Emacs executable that you're currently using. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you.